It is finally happening. Poland is sending their PT-91 tanks to Ukraine, or rather has already sent them. Currently there are at least 31 PT-91 tanks in Ukraine, but there is a possibility of more being sent. In this video we will take a look at their PT-91, how would it compare to the Russian tanks and why it's a great tank for Ukraine. First let's take a look at its capabilities. PT-91 is armed with the 2A46M 125mm gun, which can fire any Soviet-style ammunition for main battle tanks, the same type of ammunition Ukrainian tanks are using. Of course, there are newer types of ammunition Poland has adopted, like the new Israeli 125mm APF-SDS, but that is beside the point right now. The fire control system is decent enough, since the gunner has access to the thermal site, and in most cases it is the latest third generation thermal KLW1 Asteria. This already makes it superior to a lot of vehicles used in the conflict. We see Russians more and more utilizing older tanks such as regular T-72B tanks and even occasional T-62M, which do not have any thermals. But the commander sadly has no access to independent thermal site and means it has the same problem as most of the Russian tanks. The lack of the commander's independent thermal viewer, or CITV, is a big problem, because the commander cannot easily find targets by himself, which has proven to be a problem. Most NATO countries have adopted CITVs for their tanks, because combat experience has proven that such systems are needed. And of course, this is an obvious downside of PT-91, as is with most of the Russian tanks. The protection is pretty decent. PT-91 is equipped with Erava explosive reactive armor, specifically a mix of Erava 1 and Erava 2. There are 164 Erava 2 pieces and 94 Erava 1 pieces on the tank. And to be honest, I really find Erava 2 to be an amazing design. We have full documentation of its capabilities since there has been extensive testing on them. I will give a summary but if you want to read up on it, the link will be in the description. Basically, Rava 2 is capable of degrading the penetration of APF-SDS by well over 50% in some cases. It managed to degrade the penetration of BM-15 by 57% on trials, and around 40% of DM-33, which is a more modern projectile. This is very important because we have seen Russians using 3BM-22, which has a similar construction to 3BM-15, that is, a small tungsten core in a large steel penetrator. It's just beefed up and 3BM42 Mango, which would have more similar capabilities to the DM33. But truth to be told, 3BM42 has a two-piece core, it would not get affected as much by the ERA, but still, it could be just enough to stop it from penetrating the base T-72M1 armor underneath. Take away from that what you please. Another important test was against the tandem-shaped Panzerfaust 3 rocket with 900mm of penetration. It managed to degrade some 40-50% to 50 of the penetration, which really means something. We have seen PG-7 VR rockets being used on RPG-7s. Those rockets are also tandem shaped, but have around 650mm penetration. Therefore, if they would impact the tank where the ERA is present, they would most probably not be able to achieve penetration, unless it is a hit to the sides at specific angles, but the frontal armor should be immune to such rockets. The only problem on the front would be the Russian Cornet missile and some helicopter launched ones, but for what it is worth, those are not as common. What is great about Erava is that the ERA panels are really small, which gives the ability to mount them pretty much anywhere on the tank, giving it excellent ERA coverage. But we will not talk about the towing hooks, don't look there. But this is not where it ends. The tank also has laser warning receivers. This system warns the crew when the tank is being lased by a laser rangefinder or laser guided missiles, which is a pretty great thing to have, because the crew can immediately pop smoke before the enemy has a chance to properly engage the tank. Such systems are rare and in the Ukrainian conflict only Russian T-90A and T-90M tanks have had such systems so far. The PT-91 is powered by a 850 horsepower engine, which gives it a decent mobility but nothing to write home about it's enough to keep it on par with most tanks there. PT-91 tanks will be a great addition to Ukraine's arsenal because there is very little they need to do to integrate them properly into their tank fleet, or whatever is left of it. They have access to spare parts because PT-91 is still mostly a T-72 tank. 
They can use the same ammunition as all of their tanks and can be operated by the existing crews with very little retraining, because, as I said, it is still mostly a T-72 tank. There is no need for any logistical vehicles such as recovery vehicles or the bridge layers, because, again, it is a T-72. It is also important to note that one of the main reasons for Poland to send these tanks is that they are planning to replace them. There is a huge plan to adopt Abrams and K2 tanks into the Polish arsenal, but I will keep that for another video, which I hope will be out soon, so stay tuned for that. That would be all, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.